So good afternoon and welcome I'll everybody. Keep letting people in. Thank you for Thank joining you us this afternoon. It is our privilege to have this time with Andy Bailey. Andy is a best-selling leadership author and founder of business coaching firm Petra Coach. So the discussion this afternoon is taking your business from defense to offense, offense in terms in times of disruption. Um, and and there was a, a summary within the write-up about this webinar. Um, and I think it speaks very well to the current situation we find ourselves in. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Um, and that quote is by Mike Tyson. And I think it's safe to say that that's exactly what COVID-19 has done for us. We need a new plan. We need to find a new way to move forward and we need to way, uh, find a way to win. So Andy, thank you for um, hosting this webinar for us. Apex are very grateful. Um, we welcome you and thank you. And thank you all for being here. Andy, take it away. Awesome. Thank you for uh, allowing me to join you guys today. Um, if you have the opportunity, I'm going to say this about 15 more times, turn your cameras on so we can see you. I've got all these lovely faces. This interaction that we're going to have is very important. Um, and, I'll, and I'll talk to you about why that is in just a second. A little bit of background um, for me. So I, I, I ran a wireless telecommunication business for 18 years. I started a, a you guys remember beepers back in the day, the, you know, before cell phones, there were beepers. So I was in the beeper business or the pager business when I was in college and grew that organization to about 40,000 subscribers, um, went from pagers to two way radios, to cell phones, to Nextel, to Blackberry, and then sold that business just prior to Apple coming on the scene with the iPhone in a big way. And I learned a lot in running that organization. One of the things I learned is that running an or running a business, operating an actual business is very different than having a job as an entrepreneur. Um, many times we have a skill set. We just start an organization or we start a business based around our skill set, but we're missing a lot of other skill sets. So we got to become a generalist pretty quickly and it takes an operating system to make that happen. So I found an operating system called Rockefeller habits. It's based on the book called mastering the Rockefeller habits. Great title for that. And it's, and it's uh, rooted in John D Rockefeller principles. And essentially it's an operating system for any organization of any size that allows it to actually scale. So choosing things to work on and move a business forward. Um, after the sale of my company, I decided I wanted to help other companies do the exact same thing, work with other entrepreneurs to achieve their dreams, scale a business and exit. And, um, we needed this system to be able to do that. Now the system is very much like any other system you guys have all used, where you look out into the future, you set a set of targets, you put some initiatives out there. Usually the future is three years out and then you look one year out and you look one quarter out. And then for us, um, Friday the 13th of March, it just happened to be Friday the 13th, um, COVID-19 showed up. And our business was very much predicated on getting on an airplane, flying to a city, put an executive team or a leadership team in a room for a day or two and working through strategic planning and then execution planning on the other side of that. So on this day, this is our, the last meeting that we had in our office. Um, we couldn't do that anymore. We had to figure out how to move our business from 3,200 flights, which is what we had in 2019 to zero in a day. And, and maintain our company. So how are we going to do that? It also meant that the tools that we used, the worksheets and the work that we did with businesses was no longer really applicable because people were not looking out three years anymore. They weren't looking out a year anymore. They were looking like, what's the six inches in front of their feet right now? What do we have to go do? So we created an entirely new tool set, work, work tools um, to work with the 115 or so companies that we were engaged with to get through this particular time period. And that's what I'm going to walk you through today are those tools. I'm going to, I'm going to give you access to them. I'm going to show you how to use them and how to, how to put them to work inside of your business, but it's going to, and it's going to be very interactive. So if you know how to use chat, or even if you don't, I need you to find it in zoom and open it up because we're going to, I'm going to be asking you quite a bit of questions. There were, um, some decisions that we made on this Friday the 13th. The first was we looked at what do we have now? We, we had a, a, you know, a, a list of, you had a set of companies, we were doing work for those companies, but we also had this, we had resources, we had knowledge, we had experience. And because of no travel, you can imagine that's 3,200 essentially days we got back as an organization because we weren't flying. Um, we had time. 
And we decided on Friday the 13th of March that that's what we were going to freely offer the public. And we were going to wrap that up in what we will do or what we will focus on. Number one was retention. We needed to keep as much business as we could possibly keep. And, and I'll talk about what we lost. Uh, we need to create value in the marketplace. So the value creation was really key. Create brand awareness, which is what we're doing here today. You guys would have never, ever heard of PetraCoach or me if it wasn't for COVID-19. So I look at that as an opportunity. And then we needed to test a lot of things and we need to learn really, really fast. Testing and learning was really key for us. This became our key focus point for what we call short term. And that was essentially April 1st through June the 30th testing and learning. We didn't do webinars prior to that. We didn't do our work via Zoom prior to that. We did everything in a room. So everything became testing and learning and iterating very quickly. So that's just a little bit of a backdrop. Some ground rules for the day. Turn your videos on. Turn your videos on. If you can turn your video on, please do that. We want to see you and interact. And then lastly, I'm going to jump all the way down here is look for ways to take action. So everybody kind of look at me really quickly. I got a question for you. Look at me really quickly. Here's the question. Do you have anything else to do right now, but beyond this webinar? Like, do you have other things going on that you could be doing other than being right here today? Is that a yes? You have other things that you could be doing? Okay, perfect. Awesome. That's what I figured. This wasn't the only thing you had to do today. My point is, there is enough information out there already. I'm gonna give you some more information and it does not work unless you take action on something. So I want you to look for things in what I'm gonna give you today to go do, to go do. The title of my book is No Try, Only Do. Not try to do something, but pick things and actually go do them. So everybody's gonna need a pen. So everybody show me your pens. This is why your video is very important. Hold your pens up. I want to make sure you have them. And I'm always surprised because somebody always has to get up and go get a pen. All right. Awesome. So, see, there goes Michelle. She's going to go get a pen now. Um, so you got a pen. You got something to write on. There are four phases that we're going through right now. This defense, DSRO, defense, stabilization, reset, and offense. There are four phases I'm going to talk about in this webinar. As I'm talking, I want you to write notes down, right? These are things you're going to go do. At the end of every phase, I'm going to ask you to go to your list, circle one thing, and I want you to put the one thing in the chat. So that's your four action items throughout this entire set. And I've got two surprise questions I'm going to ask you as we go as well. But let me start with a quick story, which will illustrate what defense, stabilize, uh, reset, and offense actually look like. Does anybody hike at all? Anybody hikers? A little bit? Does anybody know, know of or ever done a 14er? Know what a 14er is? All right, so a 14 is a, a 14 is a classification of a mountain. Essentially, it just means the mountain's at least 14,000 feet tall. They call them 14ers. In the state of Colorado, in the US, there are 53 14ers. And there are people like me that go to Colorado and climb 14ers. Um, I've got a chart back here. There's an apartment behind me, but I've got a chart back here that has all 53 on them. And the goal is to check them all off of the list over the course of a lifetime because uh, some of them are easy and some of them are difficult. On this particular day, this is two years ago, this particular day, this, we, we were going to do Long's Peak. And I always go with my two friends, Jeremy and Sean from Florida, flattest state in the U.S. We go climb mountains. It makes a lot of sense, I know. But Jeremy and Sean got me into this uh, kind of sport. This is, um, they call this the deadliest 14 er in Colorado. I didn't know when I started doing this about seven years ago, actually how many people die doing this or how dangerous it actually was. That trip that day was almost 17 or 17 miles round trip up to the summit and down. It took us about 12 hours and we were above the tree line. So trees stopped growing about 10,000 feet on the side of a mountain. We were above the tree line for six and a half hours. This photograph was taken about 7 a.m. at sunrise. Um, we had started at 3.30. We were four hours or so into the trip. We start with headlamps on our heads, tromping through the woods in Colorado. And we're going to go right over to this little notch. It's called a keyhole on the right-hand side. We're going to go through the keyhole because you cannot go up this face without additional gear. And we're going to climb around the back side of this mountain to get to the summit on this side. Now, the interesting thing about this particular day was I was in extreme pain. Two days prior, you, you folks who hike or do some sort of an athletic um, 
endeavor whatsoever. I've had this experience at some point. Two days prior, we did another 14er, one that was much easier, but I made the mistake of wearing a brand new pair of boots. So I'd put my brand new pair of boots on and gone up for you know 12 hours on this hike. By the time I got to that summit two days prior, I took my boots off and they were full of blood. I'd worn the heels completely off of both of my feet. And then two days later to go do longs, I put those exact same boots back on. I, I, I mean, I bandaged up my feet as best I possibly could, but you can imagine the amount of pain that I was in uh, going through this. And I, I'm a person who does hard things a lot. I, I believe if you do hard things, it allows you to do hard things. If you put yourself through things that are stressful and difficult, it allows you to do more things that are stressful and difficult. So we head up this mountain. Uh, I'm following Jeremy and Sean. They always go first. They're the more experienced ones. They're also 20 years younger than me, which makes it a little bit fun. Um, and no less than three times on that trip did I grab Jeremy and say, Jer, hey, look, man, I know you got the keys to the car in your backpack. Why don't you give me the keys? I'm going to go back to the car. You guys finish the summit. I'll meet you there. And Jeremy would just look at me and say, look, dude, you signed up for this. You started it. You're going to finish it. And he would turn and he would walk away from me. And he would leave me standing there with a choice. I'm in pain. I could choose to go stand in the parking lot because he wouldn't give me the damn keys. I could stand in the parking lot for 10 hours or I could just keep going. And I made that choice to keep going and keep following Jeremy. Now, this is a picture of the keyhole. It's a little closer so you can see a little more of what it looks like. I'll back up and show you. So this is where we're headed. These boulders are somewhere in the size of a car to a house. So this is a big boulder field. It looks pretty simple in this picture, but it is an arduous climb. This is about 50 feet between uh, the top of this rock and the, the tip of this ledge. And you can't really see it, but there's a person standing here uh, leaned up against that rock. That's how massive this keyhole actually is. So we head step by step. We go around the back side of the mountain, the keyhole's over here. You make your way across and you get to about the last 1100 feet of incline or so. And as you can see, there's people climbing up here. So, um, you know, this is kind of like a thousand foot ladder. You can imagine leaning a thousand foot ladder up against the side of something and just going straight up that ladder. That's what this particular piece was. And going up wasn't too difficult. I mean, you, if you fall, you die. But other than that, getting to the top was not bad. Now, getting down is a different story. As you can imagine, coming down a thousand foot ladder is a little different than going up a thousand foot ladder. But we get up to the summit. And I learned a few lessons on this particular hike that two weeks into COVID-19, this hike brought completely back to me because I was experiencing the exact same thing in my business that I experienced when I go do these mountain climbs. The first was this lesson of you need someone or several someones. You need someone or several someones. I would never do a 14 or especially one of a class three or greater. That's you know, difficulty without someone else, without someone else. And that particular day on Long's Peak, I needed Jeremy to tell me, hey man, you started this, you're gonna finish it, and to turn around and walk away, to be my friend and be the person who was gonna kick me in the butt. In fact, if you think about it, the human body cannot pat itself on the back or kick itself in the butt. So you're gonna need someone to do those two things for you. And you've got this group, right? So this is a beautiful thing. You got all these people, I know you're meeting once a week, um, lean on each other through these times. You're going to need someone or several someones. That's a big lesson from the hike. It's a big lesson for what we're in right now. And then I started thinking about this defense, stabilize, reset, offense, repeat, and how that was playing into my business role at the time. And this is what I want you to pay attention to because I'm going to describe it as if we were on the mountain. And I want you to think about it as if you're in your business or what you've been through in your business. So on the mountain, when we're in the defense mode, in the defense mode is when your heart rate is really, really high. The oxygen level up here is about 35% of what it actually is on, at uh, sea level. So you can't breathe automatically just walking around. So you're, you, you're can't, you cannot catch your breath, right? For me, I was in a lot of pain. Um, we're moving across the mountain. Um, if you fall, you die. It's like this fearful moment where you're just moving through as best that you can, knowing that something bad could happen at any second. So you, you play that mode of defense on the mountain and you play that mode until you can't play it anymore. And then you get to stabilize and stabilize on the mountain for us was we would stop, right? You just stop. You catch your breath, lower your heart rate, take a drink of water, 
you orient yourself to your surroundings. Where are we? What's going on? We would check in with one another. How are we doing? Right. So we get the lay of the land, get stable. And then we would reset and reset on the mountain was simply we're here and we would pick a point at which we were going to go. We say we're going to that rock or up that chimney or around that turn, right? We would pick a point. We would like visually see our path. We're going to go around here, around there, over this. We would see how we're going to get there. And we would game plan with our gear. And our gear might be we need sticks for this or we need helmets for this, um, et cetera. So we'd get reset by picking a point, picking a path, and picking our gear of how we're going to get there with the resources we needed. And then lastly, we would get to offense. So on the mountain, the offense is we start moving again. We would communicate while we were moving. We would evaluate it every single step, right? We would pick a leader. So I'd say, Jeremy, you're going to go first, or Sean, you're going to go first. I want you to be 50 feet ahead because there could be loose rock and get smacked in the head by a rock. So you just kind of start moving but you continue to evaluate. And that's where you start using resources again. So on the mountain, it's oxygen and water and fuel and energy, right? So you have this kind of defensive mode where you're doing everything you can and your, your mind is just kind of shutting down because you're absorbing everything you possibly can. You get to stabilization where you stop and you kind of catch your breath. Then you reset where you're picking a point out in the future and you're, you're planning a path. And then offense is where you're on that path and moving towards that point. My first question is, where are you today, defense, stabilized, reset, or offense, with yourself and with the business? So answer that in chat. Just put in, where, where are you playing? Which one of these phases are you in right now? Defense, stabilized, reset, or offense? Reset, stabilize. Reset to offense, stabilize. Good, keep them coming. Keep answering. Stabilize, reset. Awesome. And you can imagine five weeks ago when I asked the exact same question, most people were in that defense phase, right? Six weeks ago, definitely in defense. So it's, it's amazing to me, on the mountain, we play those four phases, sometimes every five minutes, sometimes every 15 minutes, sometimes every 20 minutes. Over that entire 12 hour period, you go through every one of those phases. In business, we don't normally, prior to COVID, we didn't play those phases very distinctly. Sometimes every year, maybe once a quarter, we played a little bit of defense when something popped up. But during COVID, we've been playing that over and over and over and over again. We've been going through those phases. And something that I found that's interesting is, for all you people that are in the reset phase, you cannot have the same mentality for defense that you use for reset. Your creativity doesn't work when you're in the defensive mode. If I stick a saber tooth tiger in a cage with you, you're not going to be very creative. It's going to be fight or flight. And you need creativity to get to through reset and into offense. And I'm going to show you how you can do some of that stuff. So two things I'm going to give you today, all of these tools, Right? We're going to walk through how to use them, how you can take them and use them. And I'm going to give you access, and I'm going to refer to it as the vault. So at the end of this is a website you can go to that has all of these documents in them for you to download and put them to work for yourself. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, if you're interested and you would like to come to a workshop and work with me or one of our coaches through some of these tools, you're more than welcome to do that. And I'm going to give you a code at the end of this so that you can attend one of those workshops at zero cost. So remember earlier I said value creation, brand awareness. That's what we're doing right now. Through the end of June, we're basically doing everything at zero cost. So keep that in mind. Let me ask you a quick question. Um, this is an awesome, awesome image. Let me get somebody on here. Let's see. Karen, are you there? Can you unmute and talk to me? And you're going to need to push that camera. Yes. I can only see the top of your head. There you go. All right. Can you see this image? Yep. Awesome. So one thing I want everybody else to do is while she's answering this question, like take a picture of this. This will be in the vault so you can download it. But I want use this image. Karen, what do you see that's interesting in this? Oh, so the trick question. 
Um... <laughs> Danger opportunity crisis. Um... If anybody else can see it, raise your no. hand. No, maybe if you someone else. You the opportunity in the crisis. Who said that? It's Priya. Priya, you can't talk if you don't turn your camera on, that you're like <laughs> included from... Totally no, I'm, so, I'm sorry. The connection's not very great for me to turn on the video. I'm just, um, giving, I'm just giving you a hard time. So say, answer it again. So you missed the opportunity in the crisis. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's, that's a piece. And we do this all the time. So what's interesting about this, this is, this is Mandarin. So obviously an ancient language, Mandarin. And this is Mandarin for crisis. This is Mandarin for danger. This is Mandarin for an opportunity. And if you notice in the crisis, the very first symbol is the same, danger, crisis. And in the crisis, the very first symbol is the same. And the point in this is, I think, in every crisis, there are equal amounts of danger and equal amounts of opportunity. Equal amounts of danger. When we, and you, you gotta mitigate the danger, there's gonna be danger. But you can't leave this part out because it's equal. We need to recognize that there is opportunity in every crisis and we need to figure out what it is and drive ourselves and our teams toward as quickly as possible. The, raise your hand if you lead a team of people. Do people like, okay, so I want to make sure we got, all right, perfect. I've always said that business would be easy if we didn't have customers or team members. So you guys that lead people would agree with that, I assume, yes. So let's keep this in mind. This is something to show them, the teams that you lead, because they're gonna be focused solely right here. Oh shit, there's a crisis. Oh, this danger, danger, danger. This is where they're gonna live. You're gonna, you as the leader are gonna to have to drag them kicking and screaming over here towards the opportunity. So here's your next question. This is the first thing uh, that I want you to answer, second thing to answer to see. James, can you hear me okay? James Tubb. James has- Hi, I can hear you good. All right. Uh, I can hear you all. all right. So here, here's the question. Um, if we're going to take a trip anywhere, anywhere we're going to take a trip, what is the very first thing we need to know before we take that trip? The first destination. Thing. Not the destination. destination. Not the destination. The first thing. Anybody want to give it a shot? Nobody wants to play my games. Oh, Karen's back in. So the, the second thing is the second thing I guess is when. Okay, so we got destination when I got somebody Ken in here says why. No, none of those are correct. The first thing we have to know, Karen, you want to jump in? How about how are we gonna go get there? No, that's not right either. My my take is um, what does the battlefield look like? Who's the enemy? Who's the enemy on a trip? Starting location. Where is Sean? Nice job, starting location. The first thing that we need to understand clearly when we're gonna take any kind of a trip is where we are first. We gotta know we're here before we figure out we're going there. Fair? Like everybody kind of gets that now. In business, we do the exact same thing. We need to understand where we are before we plot a course to somewhere else. And I'm making an assumption, shake your head if this assumption is true, that your business today looks a little different than it did 16 weeks ago. Is that? True? Yeah. So your first job is to figure out what does your battlefield look like? What's your new business battlefield? The first tool that you're going to use to do that is an old timey SWOT document, except it's been updated to be what's called short term SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And this is a simple document to use. It'll be in the vault. You download it, you give it to your team. So Ken, all you're going to do is print this out, hand it to your team members, whoever your like leadership team is, and you give them three instruction points. One is read the instructions on this list. The guy that created this wrote the instructions just so it's really easy to read. So give them that and say, read the instructions. Number two, fill it out. Give me the answers. And number three, hand this back to me by three o'clock today. That's it. You don't have to do anything other than those three little instruction points. Now what you'll get back is an overview picture of your organization. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? And what are your threats right now? Right now. You'll understand your battlefield 
the way your business is operating in the moment. A lot of companies are doing this. Some of them are doing it every week, like redoing it. Some of them do it every month. A couple of months ago, some people were doing this really, really regularly. Like every Friday, they would redo this exercise just to see what might be changing in the landscape to understand the battlefield better. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Easy to do, right? All right. Once you get the lay of the land, you can start playing those four phases, defense, stabilize, reset, and offense. I'm going to walk through them in that particular order. I won't spend a ton of time on defense because nobody seems to be playing that. However, there's some things that you're missing, all right? So this is the second document that you're gonna to wanna to download out of the vault. It's called a scenario planning checklist. This is the top 25 scenarios for COVID-19 to consider for your business based on us asking a ton of companies what's going on and building these little scenarios. If you were a first responder, EMT, fire, you know, police, whatever, you would spend a ton of time planning for scenarios. If this happened, what would we do? And we would practice, practice, practice for that. Now, that's all this document is, is a what if, what would you do document. How you use this is pretty simple. Each one of these scenarios has a score of zero to 10. Zero would be, this is not applicable to me whatsoever. We should not be looking at this. 10 is, oh crap, maybe we should pay attention to that particular scenario because that could happen to us. Again, you're going to give it to your teams, have them score it, hand it back to you, see what kind of insights you can get from it. Because I promise you there will be something on this little chart that allows you to build a scenario and a plan for that you hadn't thought of yet, that you hadn't thought of yet. Now let's talk about this. Um, health, safety, and well-being of ourselves, our team members, right? Our families. That's, we've been playing that game for about three or three months now, correct? So you guys are doing pretty good with that, taking care of each other? Shake your head if you say yes. Don't make, all right, perfect. So we've been doing that. This is the part I want you to pay attention to. Write the word mental health down. Mental health. <laughs> mental health. I believe the next great crisis in the world will be a mental health crisis. Right? That's the next health crisis. We have one right now with COVID. I believe it's going to be exactly mental health on the other side. Um, and I'm going to ask you a quick question. Get your fingers ready. Show me your fingers. Show me your fingers. All right, here we go. Here's your question. Um, there are four seasons in the year, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Winter, spring, summer, and fall, autumn, whatever you want to call it. In which season do the most suicides occur? Type the answer in. Type the answer in. Winter, spring, summer, or fall? Summer, winter, winter. Keep them coming. Winter, winter. Spring, fall, summer, summer. More suicides occur in spring than any other season. More, and, and that it's counterintuitive. We would feel like it was in the wintertime when things are going bad. Now, some of you guys are picking up on some of my questions. You're going straight to summertime. But in the wintertime, we're in a little bit of fight or flight. It's, you know, short days. It's you know, a little bit gloomy, right? So we're just kind of fight or flight through that. PTSD does not occur during the event. PTSD occurs after the event. If the event is dark and gloomy, we get depressed on the other side of it. So if we feel, if anybody thinks that we're not gonna get through COVID-19 without some level of PTSD for every single human being on the planet, I mean, they're living in a box somewhere because we will. And we, you, as leaders of your families and your community and your business and your teams need to pay attention to that now. It's a defensive move because it's coming next. Um, you're already starting to see little rumbles of it. And some of you may have already dealt with it either personally or with team members or with family members. Um, I've had only one, thank God, only one call through this session, through, through COVID which was I had to get them to a suicide hotline. Now in my lifetime, I've had 15 or 20 of those because of the work that I do. But through this, I've only had one. And, I can, and I've had tons of my team members who have fractured or cracked 
and just gotten under, under the stress and the pressure to the point where we had to get them some help. So please make sure you guys thumbs up. You agree. Can you do that for me? Making sure that we pay attention to mental health. Awesome. Now let's talk about this. Write this down. Be okay. Being unpopular. Be okay. Being unpopular. Now Dave Hudson uh, probably thinks I'm okay being unpopular. I've been unpopular most all my life. I'm totally good with it. That's a joke. In this time, there are wartime CEOs and there are peacetime CEOs, right? There are wartime leaders and there are peacetime leaders. We've spent a ton of energy over the last decade moving towards this peacetime leadership role thought process, which is let's get everybody's buy-in. Let's make sure we have plenty of debate. Let's make sure we get consensus around an idea or a thought. And I believe that that will get businesses killed right now. If we do not, as leaders, make decisions quickly, and start moving our teams quickly, then we're gonna be left behind. We're gonna get run over, we're gonna get, we're gonna go out of business. There's a lot of companies that are gonna go out of business because they're not taking action fast enough and they're not being directive. Now being directive as a leader sometimes makes you an asshole and makes you unpopular. And you need to be okay with that. Your job right now is to rise above that, the popularity contest and to do what you got to do to get your companies through this particular time period. So be okay being unpopular. Um, and then playing defense around obsessing over cash. Most everybody's done this play, right? We've been uh, minimizing expenses, speeding up accounts receivable. We've been working on that for a while now. I want to talk to you about this one section called clean out your closet, clean out your closet. Um, does anybody remember the movie, the jerk with Steve Martin? Anybody remember that movie? All right, Jenny saw it. Nobody else saw the movie. All right, so, all right, so a few people. If you haven't seen the movie, go see the movie. It's amazing, it's awesome, he's funny as hell. So Steve Martin in this movie invents this thing called the OptiGrab. It goes on your glasses, allows you to grab your glasses. He makes a gazillion dollars with this little invention, but it turns out that it makes people cross-eyed. He gets sued by everybody and he loses everything he has. And there's this scene in the movie, so Jenny, you'll remember this scene, where Steve Martin is in his mansion and they're taking all of his stuff, right? He's lost everything. They've come to repossess everything. And he, he starts grabbing things. He says, oh, all I need is this thermos. And he puts a thermos under his arm. All I need is this lamp. And he puts the lamp under his arm. And he's got like these seven things and he's walking down the middle of the street just happy as he could be. All I need in my, my life is these seven things. All I need is these seven things. And right now, on March the 13th, I left my office, right? I grabbed my seven things, I put them on my arm, I walked down the street, I went to my home and I set up my office. Many of you, many of your team members did the exact same thing. I have to question, I've got an office that's five miles from here, it's very expensive, there's a lot of really cool things in there. I have to question, do I really need that? Does that bring true value? I just want you to think about what, what are the things in your life and what are the things in your business that bring true value and what are the things that don't? And it doesn't have to be about money. It could just be about distraction. Because you have that thing, you have to take care of that thing. Should you just get rid of that thing? If you hadn't worn that shirt in six years, you probably ought to move it out of the closet and get rid of it. So think about cleaning out your closet in this process. From a cash management standpoint, um, if you do not have a cash flow report that you're watching on a regular basis, whether that be daily or weekly, you need to get one. So write that down. I'm assuming most, most everybody has this, yes? A cash flow report? Daniel does, most everybody does. If you don't have this, make sure you have a way to get a cash flow report. The second piece of that cash flow report is you teach everybody on your team how to make that cash flow faster. So you teach them the levers so that they can not only know what the number is, but know how they can affect that number. And then I'm going to give you a checklist. Um, there's some things that are us centric on here, but I'm going to, this will be in the vault. This is a checklist of things that you could do to get your accounts receivable paid faster. Things that you can do to disperse money more slowly. And I told you this some of this is SBA us stuff. Um, I'm a, does everybody on here have people that owe them money? Like you have accounts receivable. 
All right. Does anybody yeah. not want to collect that faster? Keep your hand up if you do not want to. Okay. So everybody says, I'd like to collect my AR faster. Daniel, does, you don't want to collect your AR faster? He does. Okay. So think about this little piece. The next time you get a check from somebody, one of your customers, they send you a check. What would it look like if you sat down for a second and you wrote a little handwritten note that said, hey, Mary, um, I appreciate you sending in your check this month. We're a small business. We're operating here right alongside you guys. We, I just wanted you to know how much this payment means to our organization. And you mail that handwritten note to her. All you want Mary to do is the next time she's making a choice to pay this bill or this bill. If this is yours and this is somebody else's, you want her picking yours. That's it. So what are those little things that you can do? And there, some of them are on this list. So that when given a choice to rather to pay you or pay somebody else, they're picking you every single time. So think about some of those pieces and things that you can do. All right, that gets us through the defense side. I told you there were four. We're through number one. Go to the chat. Take your little list. Take your list. Karen, show me your list. I know you got one. Nice. So circle one thing, right? So look down that list and go, hey, of all the things that he's talked about, that's the thing I need to go do, and I will go do that. I want you to put that in the chat. So I want to see like 15 or 20 things rolling through this chat. What are the things that you're paying attention to? What are you going to go do? Remember, knowledge is just knowledge unless you take action. A friend of mine said once, um, all, almost all great ideas die at the altar of execution. There's no shortage of information. There is shortage of action. Clean out the closet, clean out the closet, except I call it a cupboard. Nice. Be okay being unpopular. Thank you, Michelle, for the mental health shout out. Keep them coming. Don't let them stop. This is your extra layer of commitment. You're typing it in and telling this team what you're going to go do. I'm gonna jump into stabilize while you're doing that. So defense to stabilize. Stabilize is a very key piece. Key, communication is key, key, key in stabilization. One of the simplest and most effective communication meetings that you can have is called a daily huddle or a daily standup. This is a 10 to 15 minute Zoom meeting. If you're in person, awesome. Um, with your team. There are nine things that you follow through this and in the vault you're going to find an actual agenda of how to go do a daily stand-up or a daily meeting. Is anybody doing a daily huddle today, daily stand-up? Yeah, I've never asked that question. Some people were not already doing it. So the people that are doing it, grab this daily huddle agenda, print it out, uh, and just read it. So James, just read it and see if there's something on here that might improve your daily huddle. So always be improving. So look for ways to improve. This comes from us doing this thousand times with a thousand companies. If you're not doing a daily huddle already, think about implementing one and starting one with your organization. I got an email yesterday from someone who was on one of these webinars maybe two weeks ago. She started doing a daily huddle and she emailed me yesterday and said, I don't know why we didn't do this 10 years ago. This is one of the greatest thing I've ever seen in my organization. So this is your uh, agenda and exactly how you run a daily huddle. So print that out and take a look at it. And then dashboards. Uh, from a stabilization standpoint, you need some kind of a dashboard. Now, full disclosure, this is a company that I started seven years ago, the dashboard company. We started it to support our coaching practice and then it took off. Um, and it's actually its own company with a bunch of employees now because the dashboard is more popular. But we, you need to expose the information to your teams. Expose the information to your teams. So for our business, this is our company dashboard. It's a snippet. These are the top three critical numbers. Everybody can see them every single day. They're in real time. They live on their phones or on their laptops. These are the priorities, the things that everybody in the organization is working on. Those few most important things and the progress on those things. And then the management of all of our meetings, our daily huddles, et cetera, live within the software tool but you need some sort of a scoreboard, right? Um, like we wouldn't go to a sporting event if we couldn't see the score. Like we wouldn't go watch a game 
if we didn't know what the score was. Your business is just like that. Your team needs to see how they're performing. What's the critical number? Are we getting it or are we not getting it? Um, I once had the opportunity, this is a little bit of an aside, but I once had the opportunity to see what's called the FedEx sort in Memphis, Tennessee. Anybody know what that is, the FedEx sort? In Memphis, Tennessee, that's where FedEx is located. It's the hub where everything comes in at 2 a.m. All of the stuff comes into there. It all gets sorted and it goes back out into the rest of the world. It's all in this one location in Memphis, Tennessee. And above every single station in this gigantic place, they, ha they have a minimum amount of time that they want that sort to happen. And above every single station, there's this little countdown timer and it goes red, yellow, and green, just like this little dial up here. It tells every single station, are they ahead by two seconds or are they behind by two seconds or three seconds or five seconds? It tell there's a real time gauge about how they're doing that. And by seeing that real-time gauge, it gives them all the ability, oh, we got to push harder over here because this one's behind, right? That's how they keep everything in that flow moment so that stuff comes in and it gets back out on time every time. If you're not sharing this information and empowering your teams to do something with it, hey, this sword over here is behind. We got to push harder over here. You guys are ahead. Pull somebody off and go work over here in real time you are missing the boat. So make sure you have some sort of a dashboard. And guys, a dashboard can be simply a, a whiteboard with some numbers on it that you're updating it regularly and sharing it in your daily huddle. It doesn't have to be a sophisticated software tool. Um, and then part of Stabilize is figuring out where you are and where you're going in the future from a forecasting perspective. Uh, I'm assuming everybody, and I make a lot of assumptions because the, the, the names and sizes of your business is that you have like an accounting team or an accountant on staff or go like shake your head if you have accounting people. Is anybody the accounting people on this call? All right, cool. Me neither. Tanya, are you the accounting people? No. All right. Essentially all this is, and this will be in the vault for you to download if you'd like to use it. It's a 12 month p &L rolling that's for forecasting purposes. And if you've got accounting people, you're probably already doing forecasting, but think about doing downward trend forecasting. If we're here and we go down by 10%, how does that affect our business? If, we're, if we go down 25%, how does that affect our business? If we go down 50%, how does that affect our business? You need to get visibility into what the future looks like and then you need to share that information with your teams. The absence of information creates fear, anxiety, and worry. Those people that had their hand up earlier that says, yes, I lead a team of people, you know as well as I do, if you don't give them the information, they're gonna go make that shit up. They will go in the other room and they'll formulate your plan, right? And it will be worse than you ever thought of. You know that that's true. If you, if you give them the information and say, hey, look, by Friday, we got to lay off six people, they've already gone in the other room and said, hey, by Friday, they're laying everybody off. Everybody's leaving. Like, they'll make it up if you don't tell them. And they'll make up shit that's way worse than what you got to tell them. So make sure you're sharing the information. And then lastly, and stabilize this return to work check checklist. Um, who's working from home right now? Just raise your hand. All right. So there will be a point where we are going to leave our homes and venture back out into the world and people are going to start coming together again. I don't know if that's next week or next year. However, this is a checklist to help you make good decisions when that happens. This checklist three months ago was a work from home checklist. Now it's a return to work checklist. This is three pages long, built in three sections. We've thought, thought through every scenario we could possibly think through to help you understand what are the things you need to do when you craft your return to work plan. Cool. All right. So that's stabilize. Same question, take your list. So Karen, show me a list. Nice. Circle something, put it in chat. Circle something, put it in chat. I'm gonna keep moving, but I don't miss that part. I want you to just find something to go do and put it in the chat. Daily huddle, awesome. Dashboard, inform the staff. Don't forget to inform the staff. You just start slinging numbers at them, that'll drive them nuts. Daily huddle dashboard, daily huddle dashboard. Um, yeah, and if you wanna look at that software, let me know. You've got, you'll have my email address and I can put you with the people. 
I mean, I started that company so I can get you to the right people uh, to help you with that. So you're not going through normal channels and probably get you a discount too. All right, let's talk about reset. Look, this is the number one thing that I see with businesses right now that is a challenge. And I'm going to, I'm going to rant on it just a little bit. And the reason that we're not doing this is because the unknown creates fear of action. And here's the weird part. Uh, Dave Hudson, how long have you been a leader in, in your business? Just hold up your hands. Go like this. Five, five years, 10, 15, so like a lot, whatever he just said is a lot of years, right? Here's what I, here's what I witnessed, right? So I'm an entrepreneur. I've been doing entrepreneur stuff for 30 years. I've you know, opened companies. We as leaders and we as entrepreneurs and, and business people, historically, we have no trouble whatsoever picking a target. We wake up, show up and we say, Hey, we are here. We're at 4 million end of the year, boys and girls, we're going to be at 8 million. Hey, we're at three locations end of the year. We're going to be at six locations. We've got a hundred of these things we build per day end of the year. We're going to build, be building 200 of them. We didn't take into account the economy very much. Like we didn't wait around for the government to do something. We, we didn't look at, you know, where are we working? What's going like we, we had enough information that we just picked a target and started moving towards it. Now we weren't like blindly doing that. We have, Dave's got 104 years in business already, right? So he's got a gut feel and he's got some information, but he didn't hesitate when he made those choices in his organization. He made the choices and he began moving down the path towards those targets. And he learned along the way. He and his teams learned along the way. And if he needed to make an adjustment to that target, from what he learned, he made the adjustment. Here's what we're all doing today. We're all sitting around waiting for something to happen. We're all sitting around waiting for the answers to show up. And I'm telling you, the answers ain't going to show up. Our jobs as business people, as leaders of our companies, the number one thing that we could go do is pick a target, pick something and start moving towards it as quickly as possible. Learn along the way, make adjustments because it could be the wrong target and that's okay but sitting still is not an option. Sitting still is not an option. Now this is the U S this is the, you know, the kind of confusing crap that we're dealing with. It's the same confusing crap that you guys are dealing with. When's this thing going to be over? When's the vaccine going to come out? What's the economy going to look like? Who knows? That's not my job. My job is to figure out where I am, where I'm going and how I'm going to get to that particular place. And I'll make adjustments based on all this other stuff that happens to show up on my doorstep on a regular basis, just like I always have just like I always have. So please don't change that behavior because of the current environment. Now there are some things that you can do to make it a better reset. One of the things that you can do is simply talk to your customer, talk to your customer. You wouldn't believe the number of people that I've talked to in the last two months who prior to COVID-19 never talked to their customer. And now they're talking to them all the time, right? This is what we call the four questions. How are you? How's your industry? How are you doing? And this last one, how might we be helpful right now? This is not about you selling them more stuff. This is about you being helpful. Create value. Remember that? I said that earlier. Create value and brand awareness. So asking this question, how might we be helpful, may expose what their needs are and what your reset might need to look like. If you sell me this, but I need this, maybe you should sell me this. If enough people say, wow, if you could deliver that in 24 hours, I could buy it. Normally, James, you gave it to me in four weeks. If you could get it here in two days, I'd buy a ton of it. That's how you can be most helpful is, well, hell, I didn't know you need it in two days until I ask. So talk to your customer. Um, look for industries that are on the move, right? Gosh, my PowerPoint, this keeps... It's very touchy this morning. Look for industries that are going to boom um, and because, because it allows you to be creative. You can see that things are changing out there and what the industries may be in the future. And it may inform how you move towards some of those industries. It helps you think about it if you know what they are. And then this one I love because part of a reset is you already know what to go do. Um, you think I didn't know, but the whole time I knew. And I'm picking on Dave because he's the one that gave me, you know, some big number of, I've been doing this for a long time. Every person I've ever known in every business has had enough shower thoughts. You know what, you know what shower thoughts are? Yeah, 
enough shower thoughts of what they wanted to do with their companies, but never did it. All those innovative, crazy ideas that you thought of in the shower, some of you wrote them down. I actually have aqua notes, which are waterproof notes in my shower with a pencil, so I, I capture them. Um, but you thought of all of these things you wanted to do with your companies over the last decade, over the last two years, over the last three months. All you're doing now is utilizing COVID-19 and the crisis that we're in to actually do them. And some of you right now have already begun to do things with your organizations that you knew you should have done already. Am I correct? Shake your head. Absolutely. You knew, like, you knew you need to be more digital. You knew you need to be doing virtual events, not in-person events, because you always wanted to do them. You just never slowed down long enough to make it happen. But now you're being forced to do it, which is good. But go back to that playbook, that thought, that shower thought you had, and see if you can drag it forward, because it could be something that's really innovative for yourself. And to help you with that, uh, we created a list of questions. This will be in the vault. This is 250 questions broken down into four categories. And the reason we form it in the, in, a, in the form of a question is your brain cannot ignore a question. Your brain cannot ignore a question. So this is 250 questions based around strategy. So literally all you do, uh, what time is it there? Of course, five in the afternoon. So this is perfect timing. So tonight, print that strategy sheet out. Get yourself a big glass of wine, some bourbon. Um, yeah, so get yourself something to drink, sit in a chair. And we just, haven't been able to buy alcohol for the whole lockdown, two months. <laughs> five days, 65 days. Oh, you guys are in, in bad shape. Um, <laughs> open up that bottle of wine somebody gave you at your wedding and told you not to open it till your 50th anniversary. Oh, my. Find something to drink. <laughs> and then read these questions. Daniel has, go to Daniel's place. He's got plenty of alcohol there. Ken has. Point is, Any, he, uh, my, my, my cell is still holding. Yeah. Using DDMOP buffers. If you're from Cape Town, you always have wine. There you go. Yeah, Ours ran out two months ago. I've still got enough for two months. I can't get you guys to interact with me about business stuff, but I say, I say booze and you jump right in. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on a second, guys. You're all in supply chain, and you ran out of the booze. What the hell happened? <laughs> Not very professional of them. So here's a list of questions. Download the questions. Sit quietly and just read the questions. It will get you you get your thought processes moving very quickly. That's the end of reset. Same question, Karen. Show me your list. Where'd you go? Awesome. Nice job. Circle something. Pick the one thing. Put it in the chat. What's the one thing you're going to go do from your reset phase? Talk to your customer, pick a target, and go for it hard. Nice. Pour a glass of wine. Go to Daniel's house, steal his wine. What solutions are in demand? That's right. I'm going to show you another. I'm going to give you access to that. Oh, perfect. So you guys are asking me, this is a good transition period. Tomorrow, or within 24 hours, it's an automated system, you're going to get an email. Everybody that's on this uh, webinar will get an email from me. And in the email, there will be a link to a real-time data scraper for the top 125 industries worldwide based on activity that's going on on the web. Don't ask me to explain how the hell that works, but it's a really cool list. And you can see it in real-time changing. So it'll say things like, you know, whatever, um, puzzles, and it'll talk to you about why puzzles are, are more popular than something else right now. So it's, it's a really good way to think about what are the trends in business. So what are those industries that are booming? So what solutions are in demand? You guys put in here a couple times. This will help you understand what solutions are in demand. Now from this list, you need to look at what are the trends because there are some serious trend changes coming. One of them will be working from home. Now, most organizations have fought working from home forever. Another one that's gonna change will be paid time off. Like how does paid time off work if somebody's working from home or vacation time? I don't, I don't know what the, 
how, what you guys call paid time off. Another one will be the resurgence of the rural parts for living. So I, we call it the rural America. People leaving hot spots or leaving big cities. If I can work from home, work from anywhere, why am I gonna live somewhere where it cost me a million dollars for a thousand foot square, a thousand square foot apartment? I can go live out in the country, I can work from anywhere and make the same income. Why wouldn't I live somewhere out in the country where I can you know, grow my garden and have my land and all the stuff that I ever wanted? So there's gonna be some serious trends and we need to match our businesses up to those trends. So you have to look at it as an opportunity, not as an obstacle. My, that's my point. If, if in the past, Ken, you hired everybody within an hour's drive of your office and said, hey, you have, to, you have to get here in an hour. And in the future, I can hire anybody from anywhere in the world. I have to change my operation and organization to be able to meet that demand. So make sure you understand what your trends are. Write this down. Uh, and I know I'm coming up on time, so I'm going to move a little bit quicker. Um, and, unless you, if you guys have more, more time, I've got about 10 more minutes. Create your top 25 dream client list. So I want you to think about, um, yeah, I've got another one of these at 11. So create, who are the people that you've always wanted to do business with? Whether that be a client, a buyer, an influencer, a connector. And the reason to do that now is that those people are accessible just like you are. They're stuck at home just like you. They're not on airplanes. They're not going to parties. You can find them right now, but you won't be able to find them forever. So create that dream client, dream list, the people that you need to make sure you're in touch with and get in touch with them right now because you can. Um, I'll talk about, let me go a different route here. I cannot get this, there it goes. Uh, marketing, marketing. A lot of people, the very first thing they cut is marketing. They go, oh, money's tight. We need to cut back on something. We're going to cut, cut back on our marketing budget. It's the first thing that people go to many times. And this is a story in the U.S. during the depression of post cereal and Kellogg cereal. Post cereal during the depression was the big daddy. They, they owned the market. And then the Kellogg brothers had this one cereal called Rice Krispies that nobody knew what the hell it was. Post stopped all marketing during the depression. Kellogg brothers saw that happening. They said, Hey, post got really quiet. There's not a lot of advertising going on right now. Maybe we should advertise this rice Krispies thing because we can be louder right now. Prior to the depression, Kellogg's would have had to spend everything to be as loud as post. But because post stopped, they did not have to spend very much to be able to get noticed above their competitor. So the moral of this is think about your competitors and the marketing that's happening in your space. And your competitor might not be a direct competitor. It may just be a distraction because there's just not a lot of advertising happening right now. Um, and advertising marketing in general is less expensive than it was prior to COVID. Um, fill up your talent bench is another offensive move. There are people available. I mean, we got 33 million people um, unemployed in the U.S. right now. You guys got the same stuff happening over there. There are people that are losing their jobs, good people that are losing their jobs. So make sure you're chasing them right now. Build a bench. That just means if you think about sports, we put people on the bench who are ready to play when, the, when it's time. You may not need them in your, in your company right now. You may not even have a job for them right now. Go ahead and interview them because you can find them. You can get them on Zoom. They're sitting at home. Do the work and put them on your virtual bench. Have them sitting on the sidelines. You don't have to hire them. Just know who they are so that when it's time for, you, them, time for you to need that person, you've got your 25 people already sitting on the sidelines and you need to start pulling them. It's a great best practice. Trainings and certifications is part of offense. So this is, this is what everybody hears. So prior to March, it was, oh, did you get that training done, Sean? No, nah, man, I didn't get that training done. I was too busy. Andrew, did you get your training done this quarter? No, nope, I was too busy. I had too much work to do to get my training done. Well, if work has slowed down, now is the time to implement your training. You want, for two reasons, people have time to do it. The other reason is you want people to be more valuable and ready when it comes back. 
So think about what are the trainings and or certifications that you need your team to have during this time period. And then this one I love um, because this is what we're doing. What are all those big dream projects that you always wanted to get done, but you never did them because they were just too damn disruptive. Things like uh, we're going to switch out our entire CRM or we're going to rip out our website and start the website over, or we're going to build a new uh, warehouse distribution system. Whatever those really big projects that you've had on your mind for a while, but you never did them because it's just too much to take on right now. And here's the reason I feel like it's a really good time to do it. Your business is, is our, your business is already screwed. Like we're already disrupted like crazy. And if you think about the level of disruption that we have right now, adding a CRM switch out to it is hardly even noticeable. It's not even a big deal. The things that you can get away with doing right now in your companies are unbelievable. They're so much easier today than they were prior to COVID. You can, we're, we're changing out every, all of our internal systems right now. And our team would have jumped shit if I'd have said that shit prior to COVID. We're changing everything. So think about piling projects on top of disruption just because nobody cares. It's going to be very, very easy to do them. And then lastly, uh, set a goal, make a plan, do the work. This is the part that you have to go do. And this is the part that you won't go do, quite frankly, because it's hard to do and nobody wants to do it. Um, Karen, I've called on you the entire time. Who is your favorite <laughs> sports team? No, unmute. This is new. Why am I getting picked on today? <laughs> Who's your favorite sports team? Uh, the Lions rugby team in South Africa. Uh, what kind of sport was it you said? Rugby. Rugby. All right. Awesome. So here's the question. Aye, aye, aye. Ah, somebody. So Karen, as a ratio, as a ratio, how much time do they spend practicing versus playing? Mm, maybe practicing 80, 80% 80 of their time. All right. So they practice 80% of the time and they play 20% of the time. Correct. All right, so I want you to think about that. Even little kids league stuff practices more than they play. You as business people play way more than you practice. In fact, you and your teams hardly ever practice for business at all. This, this is simply practicing for your business. This is sitting down and saying, starting, ending. So today through the end of the year, through the end of July, these are the things that we're going to get done in very specific manner. And then breaking each of those things down into task by task by task. This is basically project management 101. But we don't do it for our own projects. We do it for everybody else's projects. This is the most important work that you can take away from this. If you get to this level, it's how you go from being a rookie to being a professional. It's why those teams practice so much so they can perform at a higher level. Those things you need to get done will get done a lot. Um, the execution will go up exponentially if you will take the time to practice. And that's all this is, is practice. And, and, and Karen, um, not one of those rugby players wants to go to practice. Nobody wants to go to practice. I hate practice. I hate doing this work too. I, I don't want to go lay out plans and do project plans for the priorities. I just want to start doing the work. I just want to play the game. Those rugby players just want to play the game. I get it. Totally true. But if you don't practice, your game suffers. Same thing is true in your business. Please don't forget that. Um, for time's sake, I'm going to go straight here with you and give you access to the vault. So write this down. PetraCoach.com slash the vault, PetraCoach.com slash the vault, this website. There's going to be two books in there uh, that you can download. They're in PDF form. Uh, there's no try only do, which I told you about earlier. And there's a book called vitamin B, vitamin B for business. I wrote this vitamin B book because nobody wants to read. Uh, let me say that again. I wrote this book because nobody wants to read. This book is broken down into one page per day, less than two minutes per day. 
and it even put the date at the top of the page. So you turn to the date and it gives you this kind of article style read for that particular day with a small action item on the other side of it. Not reading is worse than not being able to read. Not reading is worse than not being able to read. Everybody knows this is reading is what we should be doing. And I made it damn easy for you. So, and I, and I gave it to you for free. So download it and just go to the day and start using it. So it's, this is one of the things that will be in the vault. The next thing you're gonna see in the vault is you're gonna see all of those documents plus some more that you can download and begin to use those with your teams. And then you're gonna see a series of those workshops that you can attend. Now these workshops are where we're gonna do those sheets that I showed you, those practice sheets. We physically will work through those with your team in a room with a coach. Just like on the rugby field, when you show up, you're in the room and we get it done. So if there's any reason that you feel like, oh, I may not get that done, sign up for one of these workshops and bring your teams to it and we will help you get it done. Use this code, Petra Strong, at registration. Normally this is like 300 US to get in per person. If you use this code, you get in for free. There's no charge for that. Or there's a section at the top of the vault that says, if you're interested in a 90 minute session with your team, let us know. This is also no charge. We'll send a, a coach directly to your company in Zoom to do that exact same work if that's what you prefer us to do. So you basically have option one, do it yourself. Option two, pick the 90 minutes and we'll come to you. Option three, come to one of these workshops and do it as a group. Completely up to you but the access to the vault is the same. So you get there the same way. There's all my contact information. This presentation is in the vault as well so that you can download it and use anything that you want. And that brings me to the end. I'm about 11 minutes over, so I apologize for that. Tanya? Thank you no, it's so like, much. It's like a deluge of information, I understand. No, 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 we, I think we're used to that these days. It seems to be information overload generally. Um, I, I think that was really, really insightful and a lot of food for thought. There's a lot of things that I think maybe we had thought about in the back of our minds, um, but we hadn't really thought about how we were going to do it, how we were going to unpack it. Right. Uh, the way that you talk about, you know, the value, creating the value um, proposition. How do you follow through with that? Um, there are lots of things that we can do that are relatively simple um, to move ahead with our businesses. Um, and, and you're right in saying that um, we're in total chaos now. So why not throw a little bit more into the pile just to make it interesting? Um, but yeah, it, interesting times ahead. And I, well, I mean, for me personally, it was very valuable. I don't know how everybody else felt. Um, and does anybody have any questions quickly before we wrap up for Andy? Dave asked if the recording will be available. I did record this, so I'll send that over to Tanya and Jenny as soon okay. as it downloads from wherever in the cloud it's downloading. Perfect. Andy, thank you very much. That was really, really great. All right, cool. Thank I'm going you. to Cleveland, Ohio now, so I'll see you guys in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks very bye -bye. much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so very much, Tanya. Be good. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 I can. Ken's gone. I know, he's just leaving. I'm sitting in the dog. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Well, just... okay, bye. Bye. I don't know how to get out of here. <laughs>